Hello guys, and welcome back to Minecraft Bedrock Survival. In today's episode, we will be taking and building our darkroom farm to, of course, gather experience. Excuse me. To actually make our dragon armor, I guess. You'll need a few things for this. I recommend a good amount of wood, especially if you're doing this early game. Or mid game. Hell, even late game wood's easy enough to get once you get an efficiency five axe. So I recommend quite a bit of wood. I'm not sure if this is going to be enough. We're of course going to turn this into planks and use that. I've got some extra so I can use have slabs and definitely guarantee. Hopefully try and guarantee we're gonna have enough for the top. I am going to grab some wool from our wool farm for uh, carpets to help try and spider proof it up there a bit like I said try keyword there and yeah you're gonna want two stacks I'm going 10 because this isn't technically isn't an ocean so I want to make sure that this is not gonna have any spawnable surfaces under it so I'm gonna grab this boat here and go out here into the complete middle of this swamp like right here because mob spawning works in a sphere so yeah go up by 10 blocks and then basically to guarantee it's more going to be more than 128 blocks because I know that there was a glitch where mobs could spawn on the trees. You're going to want to go up two stacks, basically. And also, we have quite a nice safety net under us, providing we don't land on a lily pad. That would be embarrassing. That'd be very embarrassing. So, yeah, let's not do that. Whew. So yeah, let's hope that this is going to work. That's a nice cave over there. Why have I not explored that? Are you kidding me? How have I never seen that village before? that mushrooms over there? Yeah, those are mushrooms. What are those doing over there? Huh. Yeah, and there's a village over there. Acacia village. And then there's a village out there somewhere. Oh, this is some interesting terrain. I think this is the only seed where you could have a snowy mesa. But yeah, what we're going to want to do after we're done with this is... Uh, well, first thing I know I'm going to do is I'm going to place a crafting table down. Yeah, we're going to want to place a crafting table down. Turn that into wood. And then slabs. Not what I wanted to do. Boop. We're also going to want some stairs, so I'm going to replace that crafting table as soon as I possibly can and get us some stairs. Now, I always recommend going up by three, and this is the first time I built this. 
like this. So I recommend going up three. I recommend this because that way you can actually guarantee that you're far enough away where mobs can spawn. And you can guarantee that. So it's basically... For lack of a better term, it's just foolproofing. Now, since I've done this like this, this platform is not going to be even. No matter how we go about it. So, one, two, three. Yeah, you want to leave three blocks so you can fit your chest in. This is not going to have any sort of uh, fancy mechanicry like an... Auto, like an automatic item sort or anything like that. This is just bare bones. I want XP and mob drops. Which I want XP and mob drops. Because I want this to have a future after the end. So. Wee. And yes, that brings me to my next point. We're going to need a lot of trap doors. So, yeah. In previous updates, you could have uh, cheated this farm with buttons. But, yeah, that's no longer possible. Uh, that's a fair amount of chest, actually. Because we need four... For the repeaters, or not repeaters, hoppers. Yeah, like that. I guess I can put this in here. I can toss these off the edge because we don't really need them anymore. No water splash. What the hell, game? Where's my satisfying water splash? Yeah, we're just going to build something simple here. Simple platform. And unfortunately, we don't have an elytra yet, so we have to deal with this not-so-pleasant-looking stone pillar. Yeah, basically, what we're going to want to do is... Do this, so we have a way to get up and down. Late game, you could do a uh, bubble column... I, actually, I could do that. I have the means to make a lot of glass to do that. But uh, let's keep it simple, shall we? At least for now. We can do whatever we want later. Since it's made out of wood, we could literally just light it on fire if we don't like it in the future. But yeah. Oh, there's some of the new Minecraft music. Yeah, I'm actually going to hop down and get some iron, and please don't land on the platform or a lily pad, or the boat. Oh man, that splash though. That could end very badly. Also, there used to be a path over there to that. I got rid of it because it was... It just looked bad. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Uh, iron. So, yeah, I'm 100% sure now this is not going to be enough uh, wood because we need a ton of trap doors. So, yeah, we'll definitely take, it, take uh, the steps as we need to. But the key thing is going to be getting up there, getting the first layer set up. Um, if you if need be, you can operate it at one layer and expand later, which I can recommend as a, a good method to do it. And plus, you can always change the game to peaceful if you ever need to get in it. This isn't hardcore, but I could also recommend one of these farms in hardcore. So take that as it be. 
I guess. Huh, something feels wrong here. Okay. Maybe the solution isn't doing that. Maybe the solution is just... actually properly lighting this area up. Yeah, maybe that's the solution. Ooh. That was almost death. Yeah, maybe the solution here is just properly lighting the area up instead of slabbing it. Taking the easy way out, as it were. Um, now, you may be looking at this and thinking, wow, that's a lot of planks. I, it is and isn't. As easy as that. Now once you get up here, you're going to want to go up 20 blocks. So, uh, typical stuff, I guess. So, 208. 20 to that would be 28. So... Yeah, we're going to want to go up 28 blocks. Or up to white. 228. Which... I don't think you could properly do this farm... in the old update on this seed in this area because yeah the old build height was 256 and I'm pretty sure the top of this would touch 256 so by the way this should work on bedrock this is also kind of me experimenting to see if it's gonna work at all so yeah now what you want to do here is go back seven blocks, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. You want to go seven because this one right here is eight, and if you don't know, water only flows eight blocks, so if you go back seven that way from this block, it equals out to eight. Eight plus one, basic math, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Man, you can see everything from up here. No phantoms. And I always check these after I have the sidewalls up to make sure that they are correct. Oh, that's one lost. That is a legit tragedy. Is it?
One, two, three, four, five, six, one more. Yeah, it's a tragedy because it, it's going to take so long before I get a chance to go back down that it's going to be gone, so. It's just gone forever now. Also, you want to start, you want to expand the platform a bit down there. Because it is quite a bit easier to, uh, yeah, it's quite a bit easier to, uh, take and know where your, uh, your extended, uh, basically kill platform is down there. It is easier to take and drop a water bucket down on that or scaffolding up or how scaffold down. It's easier to do that if you know where it's at. So just keep that in mind because you're going to need to go down at some point. Like more like more than likely I went up here with the wrong amount of wood, so I'm going to need to go down at some point to get more. And yeah, also keep this well lit. Because you don't want mobs spawning in here while you're working on it. So, torch. Eventually, once I get the platforms built out, I'll just put torches on those. But yeah. One thing you don't want to do is have your build access be in your water tunnel area, so... Like, I'm going to designate this block right here for uh, water access. And I'm going to designate that area there for... Uh, uh, where I... F yeah, the water source. I'm going to designate that the infinite water source area. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, I've actually learned a new way of doing this to one saves on material and actually saves on vertical space. So yeah, I've been building this wrong for quite a while. And I've only just, like, I saw a video a day or so ago. And the, the way the guy did it in the video made much more sense than the way I've been doing it. So what you want to do when you're going out here is remember if that goes eight I think it's eight blocks you go back. So yeah. Or you can just uh, judge from a distance which I'm not the greatest at so I don't do it very often. My judgment isn't the greatest so You might want to physically count. And I've just said my judgment isn't the greatest, but nailed it twice. What are the odds? Actually, considering how many times I've built this basic bones design, fairly high. Ah, no. Well, that sucks. Yeah, then you just fill this in and build up the walls on this edge over here and basically just do that two more times. Leaving out this uh, the water trench on each level just... Well, I guess you guys see how that's done in a minute. But yeah, after I get this first layer done, I might just... I'm just going to time lapse it to save on time. Because I don't want to bore you guys with too much. But I figured I would just go through the steps for anyone who may be interested to build one of these for themselves. Which I actually do recommend you do it. They, It's good XP. 
Like, yeah. It's pretty good XP. I'll just leave it at that. Well, no, I'm not going to leave it at that. I'm a big advocate for these, actually. It's good XP and, yeah, basically infinite gunpowder. So, infinite arrows. Which, if you're like me, and early mid-game and have a bow that doesn't have infinity, you're going to want arrows. Me, though, I have enough... I have enough of a uh, trade going that I could just buy mine. But if I could save on emeralds to buy other stuff, like, for example, a new axe, that'd be nice. Because this one's thoroughly thrashed. Hey, is that a jungle temple or a desert temple down there? Huh. That's neat. Yeah, this thing may not be pretty. Which, it's definitely not. It's not the worst looking thing you could have in your world. Actually, I'm going to take and put torches in the middle here. Okay, so I need some more sticks. Uh, craft that into sticks. Craft those sticks into torches. But yeah, you don't want mobs spawning up here too early. And we're going to need some carpets. Was that really the... Oh, no. I recommend doing this. It's just cheaper on resources, and if you want to change the pattern to be literally every few blocks later, you can. Because it's carpet. And I don't think mobs in bedrock can spawn on carpet. I am 99% sure that they can't. But that's not 100% sure. It could bug at some point, and mobs might be able to spawn on this. It's bedrock. Your guess is as good as mine on some things. Actually, I really don't need that corner block. I'm actually going to go take that up from all of these because that's literally wasted materials. And yeah, most things don't pinch pennies on in Minecraft, but if you can save a bit of resources, please be my guest. Because this is a game about resource management. As you can see, I have wasted resources. Uh, resources that admittedly aren't that hard to get in the new caves. Speaking of which, can I see any of the new cave entrances from up here? Uh, well, I see two, actually. I'll be something to maybe go check out in a live stream whenever that decides to work. Yeah, I'm going to go need to go down and get some wood for trap doors. Used to be able to use buttons cuz mobs would detect buttons as a block. Actually, it's maybe they wouldn't path over buttons. I don't know. I know if you surrounded a villager in buttons and then spawned a zombie, Next to it, 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 the zombie wouldn't path to the villager because it detected the buttons as a block. But 
yeah, one thing you don't want to do is cover the uh, cover the trench. You don't want to cover the trench. And this is just going to barely hit the platform and then spill off. Cool. Ooh. A lot of bad things could happen if I fell off this. And I mean a lot. Is that pumpkins over there in the snow? No, that's a lava pit. Actually, that's a cave entrance, I think, over there. Have to go check that out. I will take that free free plank. Yeah, we're going to need a lot of wood for trap doors. I am actually going to go craft an iron axe. That actually hurts that I did that with the iron. That really hurts. Yeah, I think we might need an iron axe for this. But yeah. I'm just going to cut me getting wood out. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, guys, and welcome back. Uh, as you can see, I've done a just a tiny bit of tree chopping. Now, the downside is I... Or the upside here is I think I have enough to actually complete this build, potentially. But what you're going to want to do for each layer is place trapdoors like this. I recommend leaving this last bit open for now. Um, and you'll see why in a minute. That way you can uh, cross between the the, uh, the layers without uh, too much trouble. Yeah, you're going to make want to make sure all of these are closed. I recommend leaving these last ones open. So you can walk between the layers as I've previously just stated. Now, the thing, the downside about this build in particular... And also you can place this there. But the downside about this build in particular is that it's going to take 64 drawers... Drawers? Trap doors for each layer. So... Yeah, each one of these layers here is going to take... 64 doors and the amount of layers I recommend is three that should be more than enough at least for now if you want to add more later you can ah uh, do we bother sleeping no should be fine I don't think it's phantom hour yet Like I said, I don't think it's Phantom Hour yet. Yeah, what you're going to want to do is get these started. That way you can guarantee you're not covering up the water, uh, the water channels. You don't want to cover up the water channels. So, yeah. I'm going to actually go ahead and fill these in. <laughs> yeah. Now, you're not going to want to fall in this because bad things happen if you fall in it. Very bad things happen, in fact, if you fall in it. So, you try to the best of your ability not to accidentally fall down there because it's not going to be a pleasant experience. Because if you can't get out of it, you're going to fall down there. And while I don't think it'll kill you, you're certainly going to be at low health and not having a great day. So, unfortunately, we're going to lose these two for now. Uh, they'll be down below in the hopper, so they're not gone forever. They're just gone for now. But 
but yeah, you're going to want to leave the water channel open. Um, older designs would have you build separate water channels for each layer. Which would add to the maximum height of this thing, which isn't exactly optimal. But yeah, I saw this in a YouTube video the other day, so this is how I do it now. This is how I would recommend you do it, should you wish to build one of these monstrosities. So yeah, I'm going to leave you here and time-lapse the rest of this. Like I said, optimal is three layers. You can go higher if you want, though that may decrease the efficiency of this. But yeah, I'll see you guys at the end of the time-lapse.
Alright guys, and I guess as you can see, it, that it in fact does indeed work. Uh, one thing, uh, finishing touches wise, is I recommend putting trapdoors like that. So just in case a creeper may get line of sight on you, um, you can actually shut these and nothing can have line of sight on you when you come up the stairs but I also recommend since that this can actually kind of gatekeep XP I recommend having uh, one of these sideways so you can open it and XP can flow through easily and as I have indeed stated oh yeah that's fine that's a spider yeah But as you can see, it does indeed work. And it's annoying when they do that. And it works well. I recommend this version, even though I know on Bedrock you could have a Trident Pusher and it would technically give you XP. I guess looting, too, I guess. Yeah, basically how you do this is you'd AFK here for about five minutes, come back and collect your spoils. But yeah, that is one of these grinders. As you can see, they do work incredibly well. Like already, that is 13 gunpowder, a baked potato. I'm going to take these out because those are nice. And then a few bows that you could repair up using a grindstone and then enchant. Yeah, spiders shouldn't be able to spawn up there, but they are. I may have to actually revisit the uh, no spider mechanism. Yeah, we can save that for a later episode. Uh, let's see how long this has been going for. An hour 15, that's fine. Well, anyway, that has been this episode and a slight tutorial on how to build one of these. I can recommend them. Also, one thing to one thing to note is that one easy is an optimal, and I'd recommend putting your simulation distance on the lowest possible value to prevent what is going on here, and that it is, and that is that this is slow. But yeah. Any revisions I make to this in the future, I'll let you guys know about. And yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.